Okay. Okay. So chat and and specifically Molden have been asking me to uh to to watch this video. Why would you want me to watch a balding NPC's video? Well, maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe. Maybe the fact that uh, I'm a balding 33-year-old and you guys think it'd be funny for me to fucking watch a video about balding NPCs. So here we go. Let's see uh, the top 10 pointless balding NPCs and what my future avatar will likely look like. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10. Oh, 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 all right, all right. What have you got to lose? Okay, we done? Jesus Christ. Or make top 10 lists out of pointless things. Why are you we flying by this pointless ruthless. statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 is Brother Daniel. And Brother Daniel is a human general goods vendor located in Northshire Valley in Elwyn Forest. This is he can depressing. be found next to his wagon holding a big loaf of bread. And funnily enough, when the Northshire Valley was attacked by the forces of Count Clessington, he at least which I believe bread? is for the Human Heritage Armor Quest, Daniel remained at his usual spot and was in a fighting position with a hunk of bread in hand. So this dude was ready to throw down with his hunk of bread. And funnily enough, again, his tough hunk of bread is available for sale. He sells uh, five of them. At least he sells it. He's not completely uh, He also pointless. has spring water, rough arrows, light shots, a bald crude baker. throwing axes, and light throwing knives. You know, Brother Daniel, he's not completely bald, right? He's got the he's got the like side back of the yeah. head cut going on. But I think Brother Daniel isn't, isn't it better to be completely bald? I don't know if I can do this look. I mean, right now I'm balding from the back, spreading to the front. I mean, the sides are fine, but I don't, I just think it's better just to shave Daniel's it all off. He's a pretty off. well known bald NPC. I mean, he's in the human starting area, so most people that make humans have seen him before. They've Holding probably brought some water, or hunks shit, of yeah. bread from him. Pretty notable bald NPC. And that's why he's number 10. This nine. video's gonna be painful. Number nine is Traveling Warrior. And Traveling Warrior is an orc in Orgrimmar, which I know there's a lot of orcs nine, in Orgrimmar, yeah. but this guy is specifically a reference to Kratos from God of War. Oh, and shit. I legit didn't even know he was in the that's game until cool. I was like walking around. And I was like, what? That's an orc I've never seen. Uh, and he's next to Traveling Sun. And they have a bunch of dialogue where they this talk about... This is pretty cool. That's a cool... Yeah, there's lots of cool bald people out there, okay, guys? Yeah, what about the God of War? He's a badass bald guy. And then this reference to him, also badass. Or bald, bald orcs, there's nothing wrong with them. They're cool. Or they talk about the burning of Teldrassil. That's what I was thinking. Bald orcs, do they really like, count? Dad, why do the trees burn? And then he's like, boy... Bald orcs kind of look cool in my opinion. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Uh, and then he's just like, is war bad? And he's like, war is war. And then, you know, you go look at the dialogue pretty if you cool want. Piece, I, yeah, I really actually. just summed it up for you. You really don't have to. <laughs> but, I mean, this is a pretty notable NPC in Orgrimmar. I never even realized he was there. So maybe, <laughs> to me, he wasn't that notable. But cool when I found guy. him, I was like, what? Uh, apparently, he did get added in Battle for Azeroth. And uh, he's just bald chilling in the man. Valley of Wisdom, talking to Traveling Sun. There are a lot of bald orcs in the game, but I thought this was a good one because, you know, it's kind of pointless, so it fits the theme of this series. And it might not be as well known to a lot of people as some of the yeah, other I didn't orcs. Know this so guy I was like, was hey, there. you know what? I think he can make the list. Plus, he's pretty bald and he's got a great beard. So just for the beard alone, he should make this list. And that's why that's Traveling thing. Warrior slash Kratos Orc is number nine. Let hey. me comment on that real quick because balding, being bald... Is it better if you have a big beard to offset the baldness? Like the more hair on the face for the less hair on the head kind of thing? I, I, I actually do think a, a big beard also helps with the balding. Yes? Don't worry about it? Yeah, I think so too. I think, I think going with a big beard, the bigger the beard for the balder the head. I think that might be what I have to do too. Is number nine. Eight. Number eight is Foreman Oslo, and Foreman Oslo uh, is a human quest leader located near the bridge too. in Lakeshire in the Red Ridge Mountains, and he has terrible luck. Like, this dude has everything going bad for him. He once had his tools being delivered from Goldshire on a wagon, but the orcs destroyed the Everstill uh, Bridge, and then uh, the tools were put on a boat to get across the lake to Lakeshire, but then a catapult hit well, the boat. And no wonder why he's he wanted to repair the bridge, but his shipment of materials was stolen but by Knowles. Like, everything that can go wrong goes wrong for this guy. But well, in uh, Cat... That, oh, no. Oh, my God. It gets worse. Well, I was going to say the man is clearly balding because he's stressed out. Stress can lead to balding. That's very true. That's why, I mean, that's probably... I'm balding, I think. Had kids, got married, lost hair. That makes sense. 
cataclysm. Oslo becomes trapped under a huge boulder which had fallen just God. north of the bridge. Six bridge workers attempt to remove the boulder but are not successful. And there's a big quest line where you have to take an Etten and the Etten gets it off all this stuff. But currently, Poor from guy, what I've man. seen, it's glitched out. <laughs> And it just looks like everyone's dancing around his crushed body, <laughs> even though there's nothing crushing him. But there is. It's it's so the weird. Boulder's there's gone. like this other dude who's just sitting there watching it like, yep. Well, yeah, yeah he's, he's an asshole because he's got a full head of hair. So he doesn't give a shit about his fellow bald citizen. What a dick. All right. <laughs> uh it's just it's really weird you know and i feel bad for foreman oslo right like this dude is just trying to help he's trying to repair the bridge he's trying to fix people somebody please stuff, get the rock and off he just him. keeps having the worst possible luck but you know what here's some good luck for you you get to be number eight on my pointless top 10 list there you go seven number seven is frederick calston and frederick calston is a human quest giver located at the top of the lights shield tower in the eastern plaguelands he okay. introduced various sea life to the Infectus Scar in the hopes of creating a source of fresh food for the Argent Crusade from within the Plague Lands. But he did nice. not anticipate that some of the fish would turn out to be predators and start eating others. He then asked adventurers to save some of the smaller creatures from the lake before they're wiped. All right, so this guy decided to go, okay, so he lost the hair. He decided to grow out the sideburns. I don't know if that's a good choice. We, we talked about the beard earlier, going big beard versus baldness to, you know, offset the baldness. I don't know about big sideburns, though. This is very, you know, you either look like a, uh, like a hyper-religious zealot or, uh, or a motorcycle gang member. Uh, that, prob and probably it seems not the likely that choice. he's related to Cedric Calston, who is a forsaken quest giver who resides on the second floor of the Calston estate in Tearsful Glades. And Cedric also Brad, shows a fascination for sea life and wears similar clothing. So he's actually got a cool little backstory. He's a cool NPC, but let's talk about the main thing here. This guy is bald. <laughs> Yeah, uh, true. Very yeah. powerful bald head. Uh, he's got the, the beard goatee stuff going on. So just the combo of all that, right? The super bald head, the goatee, the weird fish scientist lore. See, see, see one thing I was going to say, the roundness of his head is good. I don't I don't under know really what the shape of my head looks like. And I'm worried I'm not going to like the shape of my head once I see it all. Because right now it's covered in hair. Mostly. But I'm worried I'm going to have like a big flat spot or some kind of weird rounded edges or unevenness. I don't know, man. That's good enough for me to put him at it's number a lot seven. To deal with. Six. Number six is Guard Hammond. And Guard Hammond is a human guard See, located guard in Hammond. the Champions Hall in Stormwind City. And due to his... Th this guy, okay, this guy's just eyebrows. He's literally just eyebrows. But he went with the clean look. So this is the opposite. Some people also do this and they look good. But they go no beard, no hair. They literally go just hairless. Now, I'd assume the hairlessness should continue on down. This, this guy should be like a baby, like a baby's bottom, completely hairless. But I don't know if that's the right choice. Going with the all hairless look, just eyebrows, and this guy's got thick eyebrows. I don't know. Baldness and Probably proximity not what I would with do. Lieutenant Carter, Lieutenant Jack Spring, Captain O'Neill, and Sergeant Major Clayton. All references to Stargate SG-1, Guard Hammond is most likely a reference to General Hammond of the same series. So, uh, he is a Stargate 1 reference. I never actually watched Stargate 1, so I probably said one of those names wrong, and some Stargate nerd's gonna be like, it actually is from Sergeant Major Claddy instead of Clayton. I don't know. I don't care. I did, however, see the original Stargate movie from 1994 just the other week, and that was a fun experience. All I know is this guy is a reference, and he's bald. <laughs> Uh, sure. And yeah. unlike all the other NPCs we've seen so far, he is like, he is super bald, right? He's he got no goatee, it. facial yeah, hair, he, he doesn't the have the like hair in the back. He is just, he is oh, just Oh, this super... is fucked up though. This is kind of fucked up because look, he has to, he has been placed in a way where he has to stare at a guy with a beautiful head of hair. Look at this. He's got the full comb over, looking handsome, looking great. He has to sit here and stare at a man with better genetics than him. That is fucked up. Thanks. For bald. Story. And so... There's really nothing else. Nothing worse than being and bald and being like, reminded you know, of others is, that are not bald. This is probably good for like a number six on the list. And so that's why Guard Hammond is number six. Five. Number five is Priestess Alunza. And Priestess Alunza is a Zandalari troll located you know, at the Shimmering baldness. Pinnacle in Atal Dazar. And according to the Dungeon Journal, 
As a fanatical defender of Atal Dazar's golden sanctum, Priestess Alunza has come to cleanse the yeah. temple of all corruption at any cost. The okay. weird part was like, this is all I could find on her. I was like, there's got to be some crazy lore behind Priestess Alunza, right? So I was looking into it, but the big thing was everyone was like, why are we even killing her, right? Like, why do we have to kill Priestess Alunza? I thought she was here to cleanse the temple. <laughs> uh, but the best answer I saw to that okay. was at this point in the story, none of us are really supposed to be in Atal keep, Dazar. Keep to my priest's name out your damn mouth. Yes. Yeah. Will Smith about to slap a hoe. Will, Will Troll. Will Troll Smith. Okay. Yeah. Well, she went with the full diamond on the forehead. I don't know if that's the right choice either to cover up the baldness. Big, big hawking, you know, um, uh, gem. And it doesn't really uh, with, divert As far as she's concerned with all the shit going on, we might as well be the source of the corruption or the insurgents sent to cause trouble. So I was like, yeah, but sounds about right. <laughs> I don't know if that's what Blizzard thought of, but that eh, sounds good enough for me. But the main point here is Priestess Alunza is actually really she's, cool. Probably one bald. of the coolest bald NPCs in the game. Like, she has a bunch of cool abilities like spirit gold, corrupted gold, molten gold, transfusion, tainted blood. Plus, she looks really cool doing her big ritual thing up at the altar with all the orbs also, and stuff flying around. Out, like, so I was like, yo, Priestess Alunza, you gotta be on the list. And that's why she's number five, four. Number four is Thiefcatcher Far Mountain, and Thiefcatcher Far Mountain is one of three thief catchers that are three named elite alliance guards in nice. Ironforge that patrol the city. They can detect stealth enemies, and upon discovering one, will attack it, alerting the city to its presence. Their patrol is on a set route that takes them throughout the city of Ironforge. If a player zooms in on one of these NPCs as they pass, a pair of cat's eye ultra goggles is clearly visibly being worn on their heads, most likely to aid in their stealth detection capabilities. But here's the thing. That's pretty this cool. This dude actually. looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty badass. Uh, I legit thought this got added in Cataclysm, but I guess this has been a thing since like patch 1.3 in 2005. Damn. He also but see, part of his so coolness, maybe related I'll, to I'll mention it when Demnul we get a front look Far at Mountain in Ironforge, Jonavera Far Mountain in Ultrag Valley, and Savalbred Far Mountain. See, part of his badassness is it's very obvious why he looks badass. He did the same thing that the orc did. He offset the baldness with the beard. He went full bushy, big boy, mustache, and beard, as all dwarfs should do if they are bald. I mean, all dwarfs have it regardless, but being bald, you have to grow the beard out extra. And he did that, and that's why he looks badass. So I think the common theme here is grow out the beard if you're bald. Far Mountain in Alterag Valley. What names, right? His Although walk we don't to, actually yeah, know his true name. Maybe yeah, his he don't, name is... He don't give a fuck that he's bald. He's walking with complete confidence and attitude. Confidence is always key. That's true. That's a good point, Spam. Thank you for mentioning that. I need to re remind myself I have to remain confident. As the hair falls out, the confidence needs to continue to go up. Thief catcher, which is like, they're like, dude, you really need to become a thief catcher if your name's thief catcher. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, all right. But this dude, like, he, this is a badass dwarf, man. He just walks around. He's just like, yeah, you know what I am. I'm a thief catcher. I'm looking for thieves. He's just strutting his stuff. He's like, yeah, and bald and I know it and I don't bald. care. Yeah, so, I mean, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, it's actually hard to find some bald dwarves. I was looking all around really? and then I just stumbled across this guy in Ironforge. And I was like, dude, well, they're this a guy's hairy an race, awesome so. bald dwarf. He kind of reminds me of like one of the men in black, you know, uh, except he's in red and he's carrying axes. But <laughs> he's pretty cool. And that's why Thiefcatcher Far Mountain is number four. Good Three. One. Number three is Samir, and Samir is somebody who has appeared in pretty much half the expansions of World of Warcraft. He is an adventurer who wanders Azeroth with... Hold on, this guy, is, he's, got the name, he's got the word Sam in his name, and he kind of looks like me. Is this the future? Is this, is this what I'm going to be? Just eyebrows? He is an adventurer who wanders Azeroth with his group, Jesus. and as such, he appears in several zones. Samir used to be a level 70 blacksmithing vendor located in the Hatchet Hills in the Blood Elven hey, territory in of the Ghostlands in the camp right outside Zulaman. He also has this orc that's standing uncomfortably close to him carrying a yeah, giant mallet, fuck? and I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, he was also in Rat the Lich so King, and he was actually in the same pack that was with Bud Nedrek, who was in another uh, pointless top 10 weirdest NPCs. I'll put oh, that yeah, up in the cards if you want to go check that That's out. Right. In Cataclysm, his boat to Vajir was shipwrecked, and you end up rescuing him, and then he provides blacksmithing services at Smuggler's okay. Scar and Kelpthar Forest. He was in Battle for Azeroth in the Vision of the Twisting Sands, and he was at the Uldum entrance. And Samir oh, yeah. really is another super bald guy, right? He's just, he's bald, yeah, he's, he's got no he's facial got hair. Baldness. But unlike Guard Hammond, where he's just a guy chilling in Stormwind, Samir has been all over the place. And so I was like, hey, you know what? 
Samir is a bald adventurer. He's got his sword and shield. He's adventure. going all over. He's also jacked out of his mind. He's got like a 12 pack. Look at him, dude. He deserves to be. Yeah, he's shredded. Number three, two. So, so what did we learn from Samir? You got to go full shredded. You got to you got to offset the baldness a little bit with being hyper in shape. Be a badass shredded, you know, person. Let the hair fall out, but let the abs show through. Okay, got it. Number two is Kael'thas. Kael'thas. And Kael'thas might not even be considered an NPC, I guess. He'd just be a boss. But I guess a boss can about? be an NPC. Because I've already included a dungeon boss on this list. Because technically it is a player character can you that isn't make controlled a bald by a human. I don't know. It doesn't matter. He's number two. And you might say, Krendor, he's got hair. Well, back in patch 8.0.1... Kael'thas became bald. Here's a picture. Oh, you can see God. it what? for yourself. Look at that. Kael'thas is bald. Oh, now, my I don't God. know. Wait, this is a whole new level of baldness because he doesn't even have eyebrows anymore. Kael'thas has gone with the full I am I hair be gone look. He's got no beard, no eyebrows, no head. No head, no head of hair. This is definitely something I'm not going to do. Kael'thas is bald. Now, I don't know when they actually fixed it and gave him hair again. But some people might be like, oh, well, he's not bald anymore. Well, you don't know that. He might be wearing a wig. Oh, in 8.01, no, I think Blizzard might have just taken away his hair. And he the just got so hair. mad, so upset that he had to go get a wig. And now he's just wearing a wig. You can't tell me that Sindori Blood Elf Magic or whatever it is can't craft some sort yeah, of yeah, that's the alopecia wig, right? look. That's true. Somebody else had a theory that the non-HD character models were removed in 8.0, and that probably messed with his model or something. But I think they just got rid of his hair, and then he became bald. And now he's still bald, but he hides it pretty well. Imagine. That's why Kael'thas is number the two. Wigged. One. And number one is one that I did not expect to be number one. It is Boots, the goblin drink vendor at Area 52 in Netherstorm, and he is Boom's master mixologist. Uh, he sells uh, a variety of alcohols and non-alcoholic drinks. He's a bartender, he says, then. He's not completely your pleasure. Pointless. Pull up a seat and knock one back. I'm Boots, lead mixologist for Boom and bartender extraordinaire. If it's got a kick, old Boots can give it to you. So Boots then tells you he's been making a good living selling drinks to booze hounds, but he wants okay. something more, and he wants to make the most explosive rocket fuel ever and it Maybe turns he out you help him that do him just bald. that and he explodes boot says whoop here we go uh-oh and then he explodes he and the off-duty engineer says yikes someone call the fire marshal medic is there a doctor in the house and then the doctor's <laughs> like i'm a doctor what's the problem then he's like somebody's gotta get those fires out so i can get in there and save that goblin and then bill says someone the called and the doc says what? right let me in there Everyone clear. And then they shock Boots back to life. And uh, he's okay. <laughs> and then he says, back to the drawing board on that rocket fuel. <laughs> and that's that. That's the quest. I forgot that this quest even existed. I mainly found this because I was... This is great. I didn't know this whole thing happened. Going to look at Kael'thas and see how bald he was, but he no, wasn't. Look, at the look see, see, see right here. There's another goblin, but he decided to keep the side tufts. It always looks worse. The bald goblin, completely bald, looks way better than the side tufts with the sideburns. No doubt. And uh, by the way, goblins, I feel like, never really have good hair. So if I was a goblin, I'd go fully bald. I think as a race, they just look better bald. And then I was like, wait, is that a bald goblin drink vendor? And then I read up on this quest, and I was like, dude, this is, this is unbelievable. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this at number one. And that's why Boots is number one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you want to see some other Pointless Top 10s, you can guys. check out Pointless Top 10 Kodos from last week. Or if you wanted to see Pointless Top 10 Weirdest NPCs, you go watch that one that I mentioned earlier in the video. Thank God. Okay? Okay. So well, yeah. well, I hope you guys are happy. I mean, I, this video has not gone away. It's been thrown in the Discord. It's been thrown in the chat. You guys would not leave me alone about it. There you go. I fucking watched it and reacted to it. Are you happy? What a, what a dick punch that video was. Another death Spamsterdam, night. thank you so much for the sub, man. Death Knight of our Scourge. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Here's the thing. We can take some positives out of the video, right? Balding is usually a negative, okay? It doesn't feel good to bald. But it happens, okay? It's high testosterone men like myself that, you know, the balding just occurs. What are we going to do? But what I learned from the video is balding doesn't have to be the end. It could be the beginning of a, of a luscious, massive beard that helps offset it. Or a great chest and six-pack, right? So we learn. We got to offset the balding with a beautiful beard and a shredded body. And that's what I'll do. That's how I'll, I'll proceed into my glorious stages of balding.
or I'll just go to Turkey and get hair implants. Who knows? But anyways, moving on.